once again, thank you for joining us on this Sunday, the fourth day of December. Someone's always out there changing my calendar. I don't know who it is. I'm just sitting here and the days are passing. Well, here we go. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you for another opportunity to bring your word, Lord. Please bless, Lord, those who have tuned in to listen, to hear, and be instructed by you. For without you, Lord, we learn nothing. We're in desperate need of your help. Please help us to listen appropriately. And please help us to respond also appropriately, Lord. These are real people, real times, real problems. The life of King David shared with us. What we don't know yet, Lord, in our own lives, please teach us. What we don't have, please give us, Lord, and what we are not yet in sanctification. Please make us as we strive each and every day to walk with you. Now, without further ado, we've called in our scholars. It's a long uh, um, chapter, um, not as long as Psalm 119, the longest uh, in the Bible, but pretty lengthy, 50 verses. And here we go with Chuck Smith. Remember when we last uh, heard in Psalm 17? God was transforming us from glory to glory. Here we go. The 18th Psalm has a long title to it. It is to the chief musician. It is the Psalm of David, the servant of Jehovah, who spake unto Jehovah the words of this song in the day that Jehovah delivered him from the hand of of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul and he said I will love thee O Lord my strength so that is all an introduction to the psalm which is written in the Hebrew uh, just the introduction to the psalm hey not to make uh, Trump a martyr but this is a lot like what Saul was doing to David was so that if he went in the Philistines camp fought with them and became a Philistine do you think he'd ever be the king of Israel it's also the devil's plan to wreck him. Yeah, so think about that. It's kind of like the people who says, well, we don't want Trump ever again to run for election. It's an embarrassment. So God's plan would be thwarted if that happened, but God's plan is always greater than men's plans. So, again, not propping Trump up as anything, but just saying the devil always is there fighting in the background so the righteous don't get what they want. A good and righteous man to lead or at least when when the righteous rule the the uh, people rejoice and when the wicked rule they're always sad and that's what we're seeing now here we go continue um, this evidently is the time when he was pursued and he escaped the hand of Saul and went down uh, to Achish because he speaks about dwelling in the latter part among the heathen and all uh, and no doubt it was as he had fled uh, from Saul in, to the Philistines so that Saul would not pursue him anymore and so now safe from the pursuit of Saul having been delivered by the hand of God from Saul I will love the O Lord my strength the Lord is my rock and my fortress he had been actually uh, running uh, in that rocky wilderness area uh, around the Dead Sea and Getty and those rocky cliffs, hiding in those caves and uh, using the rocks as a place of defense and as a fortress. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. He's my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. All of these are uh, defensive weapons of war. God is all of it. He is my defender. He keeps me. He's my high tower. He's my buckler. He's my strength. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. For the sorrows of death encircled me. The floods of ungodly men, all of the troops of Saul, he came out with several thousand men pursuing David, and David looked over there and saw all the guys, and he knew they were after my hide. <laughs> they sure were. And they had encircled David. He was trapped. No place to go. The sorrows of death encircled me. 
The sorrows of hell encircled me about. The snares of death prevented me. And in my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even unto his ears. Now, out of his temple. The temple was not yet built in Jerusalem, but he's talking about God's temple in heaven. Amen. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations also, the hills moved and were shaken because of his anger. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured, and coals were kindled by it. And he bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub, uh, one of those angelic beings, and did fly, and he did fly upon the wings of the wind. And all of this is very beautiful, poetic, and picturesque speech. Of course, this was a song uh, written in Hebrew uh, type of poetry and uh, very descriptive and very beautiful. Indeed. Amen. Can't say it any better. In verse 16, he said, He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. Verse 25, with the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the upright man, you will show yourself upright. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the forward, uh, you will show yourself forward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down the high look. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all of those that trust in him. For who is God save Jehovah? And who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with my or with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war so that the bow of steel is broken by my arm. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath held me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Interesting phrase. Thy gentleness hath made me great. And he goes on and tells how the Lord had subdued his enemies that were rising up against him. So think about that. There's songs in there, too. The Lord is my sword, shield, and buckler. That's a song. And... Also, how the gentleness of the Lord made him great. Well, the Lord is very, very, very strong. And David at times did have strength and armies and men behind him. But the Lord was also very, very, very merciful to David because there was times he was in the wrong. And even though he was saying, well, the Lord, you know, uh, rewarded me according to my righteousness, there's times David was not very righteous at all. But the Lord saw the affliction and saw past David's sin. Not that he approved of it. He didn't put the good housekeeping of seal on it. Not that he looked the other way at his sin. He dealt with his sin. And David paid quite a price to the consequences when confessed. And the thing is, God sees your potential to do and to be good in Jesus. Because there's no good in any of us without Jesus but when he Jesus is in us and when we have confessed our sin when we have repented and we have followed following his way then the potential for goodness is there not in and of ourselves it's because he's instilling it he's planting those seeds and those seeds are growing within us and that's called salvation unto sanctification and so we have Chuck Talk, you know, taking it from verse 43. And then, he, in verse 43, Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the heathen. He, he was actually uh, went down to Ziglag in the area of the Philistines. And he was 
uh, the head of the city of Ziglag. And a people whom I have not known shall serve me. Uh, That's true. Those were the Philistines. Although when you th when I hear that city, the city of Ziklag, something about Woody Allen brings uh, brings something to my mind. Maybe that was a movie of his. Now this, of course, David was speaking of himself, but it became prophetic of Jesus and the gospel going unto the Gentiles. The Lord liveth, blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Amen. There's two songs there. One's one's like a a hymn we would sing it at church um, and the other one was from Chuck Gerard blessed be the name of my rock who trains my hands for war you remember that one that was 1986 and the other one was uh, let the God of my salvation be exalted blessed be his name well that is the end of chapter 18 or Psalms 18 today from good old King David 3,000 years ago Think about that. That's even older than this beard. Or this old man. This old man, well, you'd have to do him 50 times. 50 generations ago from someone who lived zero to at least 60 plus. That's amazing. 3,000 years ago. And the Lord still speaks to us. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. If he woke you up this morning, give him thanks and praise. He's got a purpose for you. Share Jesus with your friends and neighbors, co-workers. Because he knows you. You might as well start to get to know him. Have a great day in the Lord. Share Jesus. And like I say, hit comment, subscribe. It's lonely here without you.